Hello and welcome to the Wildcat Watch. I'm Kelly Peltier. Course evaluations are given out at the closing of each semester. Brittany Dean took a look at how useful students and faculty think evaluations are. Here at Baker University, course evaluations are given out to students at the end of each semester. The students rate their professor and the usefulness of the course and the material learned. These evaluations can seem unimportant to some students. I personally think course evaluations are pointless for the student because they don't take them seriously. I've had a lot of classes where kids just answer one question and turn in. I think Baker should keep them around because they're good for the professors. I think the students are obviously always going to not like them because they take time and they're not getting anything out of it. Although some students may take the evaluations as a joke, professors like to use the information to better their courses. Uh, you need some feedback, you need ongoing evaluation uh, of many different kinds, right? So in terms of evaluating faculty and courses and curriculum, that input's really important, but it's not the, the only factor that we use, of course. Mm -hmm. Faculty administration really appreciates students' efforts taking it seriously. Course evaluations are a very important tool for professors and the university, so keep that in mind when they come up in just a few weeks. This has been Brittany Deem with the Wildcat Watch. Students took part in playing grocery bingo this past week here on Baker's campus. Here's Hannah Albright with more on who took home the big prizes. Wednesday night, students gathered in maybe gym to try and snatch a bag full of groceries. Students played several rounds of bingo to help win some delicious junk food. Do you think you're going to win? For sure. No competition. <laughs> when food is involved in any situation, people automatically get competitive. Some even come up with strategies to help increase their odds of winning. To use coins and to cheat and to mark them like that. Just hope for the best and if I win, I win, you know. Two players from each round won a bag, leaving others on the edge of their seats in hopes of winning one. Uh, it felt great. Uh, I was just hoping for that 062, and whenever it hit, you just yell as loud as you can. Uh, I got a little bit of everything. Got some Doritos, Pop-Tarts, ramen noodles, some pudding, so you know, a little bit of everything. Many students won and were satisfied with their prizes, while others were a bit disappointed but still enjoyed the game. Reporting for the Wildcat Watch, I'm Hannah Albright. Some say a family that plays together stays together. Andre Willard interviewed siblings that not only have the same interest in sports, but have the same DNA. Siblings always fight, but at the end of the day, the Vaughn Weaver twins decided to go to school together. They are together as a team and work as a unit. We chose to go there because it is a family school. Um, our parents have gone here, our older sister has gone here, and really it's just given us the best opportunity to play so sports and have the best academics. Like on, for us in general, we're very competitive by nature, have been since we were little, um, tend to make anything and everything competition. So pretty much we just try to tone it down a little on the field. Um, not enough that we don't like still keep pushing each other, but just enough so we don't drive each other crazy. Siblings don't want to leave their counterpart, and the Bonari twins wants to continue to play the same sport with each other and get an education. Well, first and foremost, tennis. Um, Joe Amadian contacted us and told us about Baker and, and the program, and we went and came up and hit with the team and took a tour, and we really liked it, and so we decided to give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity to play tennis and also continue our educations, but um. It's just uh, cool that we could both come here together and play the same sport. There is always a sibling rivalry, but they are together as one. This is Andre Willard reporting for the Wildcat Watch. One unique exhibit here on Baker's campus is located on the second floor of Collins Library. Here's Tyler Bruff with more on Collins. One unique exhibit that Baker University has to offer is located in Collins Library. So the Quail Bible Collection uh, is our special collections here at Baker University, specifically our Bible collection, but we also have books that are not just Bibles here. Uh, it's named after the Bishop William Quail, who was uh, at one time a student at Baker University he was a professor at Baker University, and he was the president of Baker University. He collected several Bibles, texts, manuscripts, all sorts of interesting things. Uh, and when he died in the 1920s, 
1925, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he actually willed his in, a large chunk of his collection uh, to Baker University. We also have this room that I'm sitting in now, which is the Yurche Castle Room. It was actually in a castle in England, and uh, it was taken or sold from that castle to uh, someone in the United States, and then someone took it and put it at Baker. Uh, and so here it is now. Many people seem to enjoy the exhibit. Well, it's very few places that you can find as comprehensive an exhibit as this. And there's just so much history. When asked if students would enjoy the Quail Library, Mr. Hill responded with this. Oh, most definitely. There's, there's a wealth of history here, and uh, more than likely they have some ancestors that were living in these periods and, and uh, reading copies of these Bibles. So if you haven't yet experienced the exhibit, make sure you get some friends together and go check it out. This is Tyler Bruff reporting for Wildcat Watch. With pollen on the rise, allergy sufferers are experiencing the worst spring in years. You know the saying, the weather outside is frightful, but inside it's so delightful? Well, with the emergence of spring, the weather has been in fact delightful, but people's allergies seem to be especially frightful this season. Here's what two sufferers had to say about the effects. This season I feel like they've been abnormally worse than they have been in the past. I usually take like Claritin or some of those just allergy medications, but it's hard to find ones that don't make me drowsy for classes, so that can kind of make this season hard. <laughs> for Brittany Wyndham, tissues are a necessity, as sniffling and sneezing are just some of the symptoms she deals with daily. I haven't had such bad allergies in years, and I just woke up one day and it's just like everything. I feel lethargic and can't breathe and just, you know, outside is my enemy. I t I'm taking like three different allergy medicines right now, and um, my allergies affect my asthma as well, so I'm also taking asthmatic <laughs> medicines and everything, and then also I am sleeping a lot more and drinking a lot of fluids, but well, that's the worst part of allergies is you kind of just have to let it go away by itself. The first thing I have to do is take my allergy medicine because it has worn off from the night or the day previous, so that's the first thing I have to do or I won't be able to see because my eyes are so watery and everything. And then I, again, before bed, it's the same exact thing. And sometimes I have to like add more medication if it's really bad like today. So the next time you head outside, make sure you're equipped with some tissues to weather the allergy season storm. Not only do allergies come with this weather, but so do more active wildlife. Robert Dowdy asked around campus to see if students and staff know the correct way of responding to a stray animal on campus. As a tree campus, Baker University is full of friends, furry, feathered, and domestic. I asked students and faculty about the proper response when encountering a wild animal. I usually avoid it. And call security, I would assume. No, usually there's nothing big enough to be scared about. If it's a dog, you can usually scare it away pretty easily if it looks like it's going to attack, but I haven't seen anything. If you find one aggressive, we should have the students contact us and we will uh, contact the PD. Uh, usually if we contact them just because of a, a dog at large on the campus, uh, they usually don't do a lot because at the time they get here the dog's loose and they have nowhere to put the animal unless it's aggressive. Usually uh, we kind of ignore it long just not annoying the people and jumping on them or acting aggressive. They tend to, to uh, migrate to the campus because there are human activity and there are kids out here and sometimes when they're loose the t uh, kids tend to interact with them and pet them so this is the first place they come also. And it's not just young kids. Uh, it just makes me want to take them in because they're so cute and cuddly. This has been Robert Dowdy reporting for the Wildcat Watch. We are just a few weeks out until Wildcats walk across that stage to graduate. But what comes after getting a degree? Wildcat Watch's Kyle Wilson talked to a few seniors with their post-graduation plans. I think the transition is absolutely terrifying. Um, it's going to be a huge uh, change to go from having all my friends here super close, um, just a phone call away, walk down the street and be with all my friends, to having them be 767 miles away. And then, mm. I don't know. But I think it'll be fun to 
start having different a different type and style of responsibilities rather than classes and homework to get done okay. will be reports and meaningful projects um, that have real implications and it'll be nice to have that paycheck too. Yeah. Yeah. My major is economics and I also minor in mathematics. The things that have led to my job have been things I do during the school year. So I'm an institutional research assistant for the math department and I help with producing the Baker University fact book. So I decided to go into econ because I really enjoy math and I really enjoy studying people and econ is pretty much mashing those two concepts together. It's a lot of math, but you also study people and why they make the decisions that they do. Tax day has come and gone, and this week's Baker Beat, Wildcat watches Bailey Cabry ask students if they're responsible for filing their own taxes or if their parents do it for them. Hello, and welcome to the Baker Beat. I'm Bailey Cabry, and this week I was on campus asking students if they file their taxes or if their parents do it for them. Let's take a look. I do not file my own taxes. My dad actually has a person that does it, so he doesn't even do his own. So pretty much all I have to do is go home and sign a form, and that's about it. <laughs> my parents claim me, so they do it for me. My dad does my taxes, and he has a tax business that he runs, and he is in charge of, so he does my taxes and our taxes and other people's taxes. That's it for this week's Baker Beat, and until next time, I'm Bailey Cabry, reporting for the Wildcat Watch. That's it for this week's Wildcat Watch. Until next time, I'm Kelly Peltier.